Well, uh, welcome back to another fun-filled video called Estimation of Decimals. Uh, today, we will continue our work around the multiplication of decimals, but today we are just going to be thinking about how we estimate decimals in terms of finding their products. Uh, you know I love to break down the vocabulary, so let's break it down. Estimation. Right. If it's estimation, that first thing we should think about is the word about. Remember, when we're estimating, we're getting something that's close to the real answer. It is a really good way to help double check your work. And when I think about about an estimation, I should think about rounding. And so we will talk a little more about what does that rounding look like. Right. Um, this is that one that's a little more free because you're thinking more about what is compatible versus what is the exact rule of rounding? And that's what gets tricky for people. Then we're going to also think about how we're doing this with decimals, right? And those are parts of things. And we're going to talk about products, which is multiplication. So that's kind of what we're doing today. I, I think if we had an example of that, we might say something like, 43 and 3 tenths times 4. And the reality is, is today we are just going to figure out uh, how to estimate this. So what about how much is this? Not the exact answer, but about how much is something like 50, uh, 45 and 3 tenths times 4. So let's dive into it. So if we wanted to break this down into steps, I'm going to rewrite this problem up here. 45 and 3 tenths times 4. We wanted to break this down into the steps. Uh, I think step one, where am I going to write this? Step one, definitely, this is where we do our rounding. This is the compatible part, though. I think the easiest way for me, this is my advice, is really think about that base 10. I think about rounding to numbers that are compatible with base 10. And what I mean by that is, if you remember, that base 10 is like, you know, your ones, your tens, your hundreds, your thousands, your ten thousands, and so on. Oh, that looks confusing with the commas and the commas. But yeah, you know, our base 10. So if I think about like 45 and three tenths, compatibility wise, like a, a number that like my brain can work with quickly is going to be 50, right? That's that whole number. Ooh, maybe we should say that, right? Maybe we're rounding base 10, but we are thinking whole number. That's probably really important to keep in mind, right? We're going to get rid of the 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 decimal in this concept, right? So I'm going to round this to 50, which makes sense. I have about 45 holes. Uh, to me, I'm just going to call it 50 holes. I'm not going to call it 45. And I think a lot of you looking at this would say, oh yeah, well, 45 and three tenths, that would become 45. That does make sense. Uh, but the reason I went to 50 is because we got to do some multiplication here. And I got to be honest, I don't know quickly off the top of my head what 45 times four is. Right. And that's the whole idea of estimation is that when you round, you want numbers you can kind of do snap math in your head quickly. And estimation is a quick process. If I have to round this to 45 and then go over here and say, well, what's 45 times four and do the math over here? That's not an estimation. That's just me solving things. And that that takes too much time. So that's why. Oh, that did that again. That happened in the last video. I erased one thing and everything kind of disappears. Hold on. All right. There we go. Um, that's why when we think about rounding, we do want to get compatible with base 10 whole numbers. That's pretty tricky. All right. Next, if you look here and we can already kind of step up to what like that next uh, that next thing is going to be. If you if you look where we're at over here, we have one of those base 10 multiplication problems that we've done before. And that's where we can go next. That's that thing where we can underline. Underline the non-zeros and multiply non-zeros and multiply right so again oh, hold on yeah did it uh, again if we come over here then that just means i'm going to think about how to take and multiply five times four right that's all i'm going to look at i'm not going to worry about 50 i'm going to say five times four well that gives me 20 right and then we can go to that last skill. And notice, again, this is what's so cool that in multiplying or estimating the multiplication of decimals, we're actually using skills we've done in all the previous other units. Like, that's really cool. And then from here, let's just count our place values. 
count place values. And so I can come back over here and see that in this, it wasn't a five, it was 50. So there's one more place value. So that gets me about 200. So 45 and three tenths times four gets me about 200. And that that's truthfully just the work we're going to do today. Now, there are some deeper things to be thinking about our understanding of numbers when we do this. So we'll, we'll look at those, but let's just practice a couple others of these straightforward, right? Uh, let's say we have something like 99 and two tenths, and we're multiplying that by 82. And we are estimating, right? So again, I'm going to do some rounding. I'm going to round this to a whole number. Well, I have 99 and two tenths. For me, that rounds out pretty well to 100. I like that. That's that base 10 whole number that I can work with. And then I have times 82. Now, I suppose I could round the 82, right? I could probably round that too, round it to an 80. But one thing I'm recognizing ahead of time is that I'm already in this position where I get to use the identity property of multiplication. And that's going to get me a much more accurate description there, right? One times 82 is 82. And then I have one, two, one, two, which means that 99 and two tenths times 82 is about 8,200, right? About, it's an estimation. So again, rounding, uh, multiplying, non-zeros, counting place values, doing the job, okay? Uh, let's look at another one real quick where it's a little more straightforward. And then we'll look at some of the ones that might make our brain hurt a little bit. So here's uh, 37. I'm going to multiply that by 93 hundredths. Uh, again, I'm going to round the decimal to a whole number. And here's the thing. I have zero whole numbers, but I have nine tenths. So that's pretty close. So to me, that's one times 37. So this is about 37. That would actually make sense. It's actually going to be a little bit smaller than 37, but we'll talk about that in this unit and what that really means. Okay. So those are kind of like the straightforward ones. Let's talk about some of the ones that really might want us to make our head spin a little bit. And it's okay. There are definitely different ways of doing this. This goes back to compatibility, but this is something that's pretty interesting. This is six tenths times 184. Now, in first glance, you could say, oh, well, we just saw this in the last problem, right? What I saw is that this is close to one and one times 184 equals 184. And, you know, I would say that that's pretty accurate, but it is also a really dramatic overestimation. In fact, what it is, is we can use our number sense to get a much more accurate estimation of this number. And here's how and why. And this, hold tight, because this might make your brain go a little wacky. So what I'm going to do in this case is I am going to think about what I know about decimals. And one thing I know about decimals, I'm going to draw a little number line down here to make sense of that, right? I know that we're dealing with this with tenths, which means I have the number one and I'm breaking it into 10 pieces. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Right. And uh, let's see, this would be like one tenth and this would be like two tenths. Right. See what I'm doing there. And this is three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, which is right in the middle. Uh, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths. OK, now my point being in this is that actually in this case, I'm actually not going to round this decimal to a whole number. What I am going to do is I'm going to use number sense of what I know about decimals. And what I know about decimals is that five tenths, right? Just like five is half of 10, five tenths is half of one. So five tenths, five tenths is half. So I actually am going to round this to half. And really what this says then, if I have half, of, and we're going to talk this this year a lot, that the multiplication symbol does say of. If I have half of 184, well, gosh, I could actually think about that. Like, what is half of 184? But I actually don't know half of 184. <laughs> Not at the top of my head. But what I do know, again, is another step of estimation. And again, see what I'm doing here. I'm like really using number sense. I'm going to keep this. But now I'm actually going to round this to 200. And what this actually means is I have half of 
100 and or 200 and half of 200 is 100. And that is a more accurate estimation that this answer would be about 100 instead of being about 184. Because look at over here, I've never had a one. I've been multiplying by a number smaller than one. And again, we will totally talk about that as this unit goes on, but this is just a good little preview to think about that. And if I even wanted to be more accurate, I could say, oh, I have half and I'm a of, I'm gonna round this to 180 because I know that half of 18 is nine. So actually I could get even a closer estimation of 90. This would be about 90. So that's a pretty cool way of looking at it. So that's another way. Now, like I said, remember at the beginning, we could have rounded this to one, called it 184. That would work. It is not the most accurate estimation, but it works. So this is where I'm challenging you to go, oh, well, what more do I know about numbers? And slow down, right? And this isn't a race. It's not about getting all the problems done. It's not about always having the right answer. It's about being a deep thinker. It's about thinking about your math in a way that you can use this great knowledge you have to solve. So let's look at another one like this. And this one's even crazier. So <laughs> hold on. So we're going to take 1,200. So we're going to multiply that by 5. So let's kind of go back to thinking about what we already talked about last time with estimation. You know, this is zero. So this is way less than one. In fact, I would even say that 1,200, that's really close to zero, right? It's really close to zero. Think about that. Oh, boy. I should have thought about this ahead of time. If we had the number one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I'm cutting this into hundreds because that's what we have, right? So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, that's a little sloppy, but this would be the number one and it's cut into hundreds. I've cut it into the hundreds place, which means there's a hundred pieces here. So if I had 12 hundreds, right, that would only be that much shaded in, which is really small, right? That's really close to zero. 12 out of 100. Oh, that's another way that fraction, 1200. It's really close to zero. Okay. So that's one way I could think about this. I could say, oh gosh, this is like one tenth or, you know, close to zero. And so zero times five is zero. Or I could say, oh, you know what though, actually, this does round to a tenth. And I am multiplying by five. So maybe I could use some sense then in thinking about what this means is I actually have like a tenth of five. Now, again, if you're watching this, you're like, what? No, huh? I would absolutely say to you, that's fine. Call this zero times five estimation about five. But actually what we know is it's not going to be zero. It's not about zero. So I think I said about five. It's going to be about zero. It's actually going to be a little more than that, but not much more, right? Because now we're talking about this idea that we have five and we have one tenth times five. So I don't know. We could play around with that trick. Uh, what do we know? One times five is five, but it's actually less than one. We have this decimal that we talked about yesterday. There's a place value. Does that mean that the five moves to the tenths place, right? Because this is actually smaller than one. So maybe I get five tenths. And I wonder, gosh, would that be an accurate estimation? Well, I do know that it's not, it isn't zero. It's a little more than zero. And I knew that five tenths, is pretty small, right? It's not quite one, it's a little less than one. And that could be one way that I look at it. Um, so this is what I mean about sometimes when you're dealing with some of these estimations where you have something less than one, you can be a little more playful with the way you think about the numbers. Now, like I said, this one, this, I would call this like a level uh, 100 type of problem. This, this one's pretty big. I would say something like we did in this one where you're thinking, oh, more like half of something, right? It's like a level 10. I don't know. I'm like making up levels right now. And then this is the math that we're doing now. So this is the stuff we're working on. And this is the just right level. This is like level five, fifth grade, level five type of math. So I don't want you to be scourged if you're like after that long talk on this one, you're like, I don't, that makes no sense. 
go back and think on that level five scale of thinking and you're going to be just fine. Do the work that we've talked about, right? Round the base 10 whole number, underline non-zeros, do that multiplication, count, put those place values in, and you're going to have a good estimation of multiplying decimals. So I'm going to leave it at that, and I'm going to go ahead and encourage you to make sure you get on your Savas and get that done today, um, but also ask questions. I mean, this is one of the things I've noticed is some of you making this choice, the questions aren't being asked, and I can see in the work there's still some confusion, and it's okay to be confused. This is difficult stuff, so go ahead and continue to think about asking questions. I uh, appreciate you. Keep up the great work and we'll see you next time.